Well, good morning, folks. We're back at our forest camp deep in the heart of Wales. And uh, we've just arrived at camp now, and there's a lot of roe deer sign around, so there's actually drop ins here in camp. So they've been staying in our camp. We haven't been here for, I think I was the last one here back in February, it's now September. So nobody's been here since, it's really overgrown. You can see Russell in the background, there's only the two of us this time. So he's got his gloves on, he's ripping all the nettles out, so at least then we can start tidying up the fire. We need to make a new uh, pot hanger stand because I think the last time when I came here, I literally just made a small tripod because everything had rotten last time. So we have to make something now to get our food cooked and we need to get some firewood in. Okay, I've got some uh, wood split now from the um, axe challenge video I've been doing at the moment, but Russ and myself need a nice cup of tea. So I'm going to use some of the splits. And I'm not going to use the axe to feather because, yes, you, I can crudely feather with an axe. It's not meant for that. That's what you need one of these for. Now, if you watch a lot of my previous videos, I'm quite a bit of a Mora fan. Um, Mora have changed. Um, they must have changed their design team. I don't know what they've done. For the last 10, 12 years, whatever, I'm really liking what Mora are putting out and I'm pretty much buying everything that they're, they're, they're releasing. But anyway, I love the Mora knives, but I didn't bring a Mora this time. I brought my my Rob Evans uh, FTP, full tank poco. Now, this is probably, out of all my custom knives, my favourite knife. This has had a lot of use. It holds the edge brilliant. I'm not, I can't say exactly. I think it's 5200 bearing steel, but this is was the prototype, and you can actually, you will actually still will make these for you. But this was the prototype, and it's probably my favorite custom knife. So, anyway, get some feathering done. Now I don't want massively long lengths of wood to make these feathers because I'm gearing all these now towards the size of my bush box XL stove. Now it's pointless me having massive long feather sticks, which I will need later to light the fire, which is just there in front of me. I just want to brew fire. Obviously I've got to nip down to the river to get the water. This isn't like um, whether it's, I think it's my previous video, number wise will come on here, where um, I camped out on Worm's Head in the Gowworm and fishing. I had to carry all my own drinking water over there, so on a warm day, it wasn't nice uh, walking across that causeway with six litres of water and a couple of cans of bow, plus all my kit. Wasn't the safest of things to do, crossing all that dangerous uh, sharp rocks. But anyway, don't need to here because I've got a nice stream down uh, the bottom. So ideally, I want a few of these just to take the spark, get the fire going, and then I'm going to split them down really small and I get the water on for a cup of tea. You don't need to watch any more, folks, but you know. The spruce is lovely to feather. You've got a beautiful knot free section, you can get amazing curls. I'll do some cool feather sticks later. Didn't want to light that. Just lift that up. I'm 
There go the hairs on my arm. That's the joy of making loads of feather sticks. The more practice you get, you're not so precious about burning them. It's a bit windy here today. Check if I lift you up a bit. Right, we're going to leave this fire established a bit now. Just to get my base of heat in there. And if you can see in the background, my finger comes in, ping, there. Russ has loaded up his Petromax, bring it into shot. That's his Petromax um, coffee percolator. There's the badge. Damn good bit of kit. I got one of these as well at home. It's still in the box. I haven't even christened it yet. But really good bit of kit. We've taken this to Sweden, haven't we? Yes. This has been up to Sweden. Then obviously all the tea and coffee and everything in. I'm not sure the size. It's, well, what is it? 1.8 litre or something like that. Uh -huh. But obviously we don't need 1.8 litres of water. But once this fire is established now, we get the coffee on. And that's proper coffee in there. I really love this um, bush box. I used it in the last, um, well, the last video I edited anyway. And uh, it's such a versatile bit of kit. Yeah, it's not the lightest of things. I wouldn't mind a titanium one, but they're expensive. And I'll wait until this is ruined first until I change and get a new one. Russ has gone to all the effort, he split all this wood and everything down, so he had the privilege of lighting the fire. He wouldn't let me film it, and typically then on his third spark it went up like a treat, so should have just left me and he'd look good on camera. This is all now um, Sitka spruce, so it does crackle and split, uh, split quite a lot when you split it down. It's nothing like sweet chestnut, but that's the whole point of wearing wool around the fire. <laughs> Hey, right, cool. Get the kettle on. So, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to set myself up now to do a bit of baking. Because I brought no bread with me. I've brought some Morrison's white bread mix. It's just more convenient than me bringing flour and bits and bobs and I'm getting smoked out. <laughs> so, it's alright, pal. So, I'm not going to make the full mix. Obviously, this makes a large loaf. I want enough. I've got a small baking tin. This was an Amazon purchase. It's a five inch by five inch by three inch cake mold, aluminium. But what I've done is I've shaved the sides down and some of this off so that it fits inside my 16 centimeter zebra pot. Now, I've been watching um, Firebox, I can't remember his actual name, Firebox USA or Firebox Stoves or whatever. Um, I've been watching his YouTube channel and what he does, I've had this mesh, stainless mesh from China, from eBay, Covid free, I washed it. That then sits in the pot to provide my shelf and then this with my mix, obviously uh, greased and things, slides inside. That goes on the embers and I've got a little wire gadget that I'd seen he'd made, that slots in, it's just, and then I can get some embers on the top. And then I made the wire hatches. There's a trap, there's a few videos on uh, YouTube on how to make them. It's basically how to lock then, to lock the lid on on the handle and then I can turn this into a small oven. Never tried it, it might be a complete disaster. I hope not because I've also brought, let me get this out, Betty Crocker's temp. Uh, tempting chocolate brownie mix. Now, because if the bread works out all right, that I can bake it, then this we're going to have a nice slab, a thick slab of chocolate brownie later as well. Let's pray. Hold on, I can't cross my fingers there. So I need to get the bread mixed. Okay, sorry, folks, I'm getting smoked out. The wind blew it in my face. 
Anyway, like I said, I'm only going to use half of this, so I need to get it opened up. Probably going to end up covered. If you had any big bangs, Rob, uh, Russ is covered in his shelter with a tarp just to cut the wind. Right, I need to get this. I'm going to get half of this done. And then if it works, I can make some more bread tomorrow. Not the best uh, measuring tool. I'll add it bit by bit. There's my birch spoon spatula thingy I made on the last camp of video. I don't know if it'll be the last one for you viewers. Right, I'm gonna get this mixed up. I need a bit more water. And then once I get this into a dough, I'll do a bit of knead then. Then it needs to sit and rise for a little bit. Come back to you. Okay, so I think it's at the stage now where I can get my hands in there now and start kneading it. If I do it on my stool, and I've actually brought a little board with me. I've had to come off the stool because the fire is too warm. This is where I'm going to get now, covered in dough. Try and do it left handed, I'm a right handed person. It's just I need a hand to be able to man manage the camera and I've already got leaves and stuff in it. Right, I need to work this for a couple of minutes now when I get it out on the board. We get in there. It's starting to get sticky, I know. Right, I'm going to leave that now, if I can find my lid. I'm going to put this close to the fire so it's a little bit warm and then leave that then to prove rise, whatever you call it. I'm not a baker. Okay, I've just taken my pot from away from the side of the fire and that's risen quite a bit. So. Yes, that's blown up, so that needs like a second lead in or whatever now, won't it? So uh, I'll get that done. And I think I'll leave it for a little bit again and get my pot and everything ready then. But uh, I'm pleased with that. That's risen quite a bit. So let's get this out of my little board. Okay, so I've got my bread mix now. I've lightly oiled the inside of my pan, just to hopefully it'll help. Um, I've just got to get now my pot set up. Let's put, let's score a couple of lines in it. Whether that makes any difference, I have no idea. I've seen people do it. Right, I'll leave that sit there a minute whilst I prep everything and I'm going to get the pot on the fire. Okay, I've got the zebra pot set up now. Um, when I go to check the bread in a bit, I'll open it up so you can see the inside. But I made a little wire uh, frame at the top. You can see it there if I zoom in. 
it's just so I can balance embers on the top so there's heat above and then if I drop you below it's sitting I've made the clips you can see the clips um, there and at the bottom it's just to hold the lid on and then you'll see when I open up I've only just done it so I'm gonna leave that now the heat needs to build up I'm just gonna cook in the embers so if I come back out we're building the fire back up again now because Russ needs to start cooking. You got a casserole? Casserole. By uh, all these fine over here. Well, he's got all the veg and everything ready, and it's going to be cooked in uh, the 10-inch anodized GSI, GSI Dutch oven, yeah. anodized aluminium. So we'll get back to you. Okay, over at the Welsh Woodsman Outdoors Shambles Kitchen. I've now got my new, sla new slash old Swedish Trangia stainless mess kit. Now these things are hard to come by. Um, one of the lads on one of the pages I follow on Facebook um, commented that Military Mart had just had a supply of these. These are really difficult to get hold of. You can, you can buy the aluminium ones no problem. But these are the stainless ones. So I thought I'm gonna take a punt in this. I bought it and it came luckily it came yesterday. I gave it a scrub out. So what I'm gonna do now, I remember Russ mentioning mentioning to us years ago that him and his friend when they were kids they used to make chips in it. In an aluminium one, yeah? Yep. In the yeah. So what I've done is I brought some cooking oil with me. Now I've got bread cooking in my little oven in the zebra pot, so I got this as well. So I got some potatoes, I got oil. So I'm going to try, with the meth spooner, I'm going to make some chips. I'm going to have sausage and chips in the woods for supper. Okay, so I filled the meth uh, burner up. These are the army ones. But this was black yesterday, my old burner. It came, when I bought the set from Military Mart, it came with the burner. And obviously it was a lot shinier than the one I've got. And I thought, let's clean the one I've got. And it came up. I know, yeah, there's still bits of black in it. Can't do anything about that. That'll take some even more of a scrub in. So, I got that in there now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm my... There we are, she's burning. That's one good thing about having low light. You can see the flame. Right. Cooking oil. Let's get the oil warmed up. And then I'll fuss and peeling and chipping my potatoes I'll keep some back for tomorrow obviously I don't need to have it all in there because once I put the potatoes in it's going to rise up the pan cool Let's get that oil warmed up. Okay, I've done a test of chip. Hopefully now I'll try to do it and oh, I'll have dropped that and not burn myself to death. But the chips now are going in to hot oil. I think if this car is on heating up, I may have to uh, put um, the simmering on. That was one big potato. Put you in. I think once I uh, give it a little shake, it'll be in. Yeah, it's alright, Russ. Leave him cooking there now. Heat's dropping, obviously, now because of that. If I. Is it safe to cover, do you think? I would. Yeah? yeah. So know if it boils over, folks, because it'll just be all over, and then uh, we'll be running for help. <laughs> My car's down the road anyway. Well, this the stainless steel Swedish Army Trangia set is working a treat with cooking chips. They come in nice, and it's not overheating as well. It's absolutely brilliant for it. Well done, Russ. Good idea. He Russ has bought one as well now. <laughs> okay, I've had to resort to using a bit of artificial light now. 
chips are cooking lovely and if I pan you around Russ has got his casser all over the fire on his Dutch oven and then I zoom you in just check my bread now it's sitting on a bed of embers and then I've got embers on the top it's risen a load but it's still not browning so I'm going to probably leave another 15-20 minutes cooking with embers and then I'll check it again but once these chips are cooked I'm going to fish them out, dump them in the other pan and drop the sausages in quick lovely ok I'm going to try not to burn myself on camera to stop them falling off get that clip up let's have a look my bread that's risen a load, isn't it? Yeah, we need to, because my hand's starting to burn. Well, it's alright, I'm holding it. Right, so that still needs more heat now. I've sort of kept it stew in there. Let me get some more embers on. Anyway, it's risen lovely. My camera's covered in ash. Get some more embers on. On the other side of the camp kitchen, my chips are almost done. So I've chucked two chilli, Lidl's chilli bratwurst sausages in with the cot oil. So they're not going to take long. So sausage and chips, and then hopefully if my bread works. I'm not going to eat it tonight, I'm going to keep it for breakfast in the morning. Okay, so if I pan you forward. My food is done. Two chilli bratwurst and fresh cut chips, skin on. And my bread is almost done. But that's tomorrow's bread. Anyway, I'm going to fish these out now. Okay, folks. I've just fished them out of the hot oil. I'll bring them up closer to the camera. Oh, look at that. In the woods, boys. Sauces and chips up. Uh, well, I wish I brought a can with me now. <laughs> oh, no, it's the same thing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to drink bloody crappy stream water. Anyway. Time to dig in. Right then, time for my woodland supper. It's the first time I've been up here in the forestry and cooked up a plate of sausage and chips. And I just thought for a change, I'm normally making, uh, Russ is doing a casserole, I normally do something like that. And I thought, well, I had potatoes and stuff. And it's like, right, get the oil in. Let's get these bad boys cooking up. My first tester, let's see what it's like. <laughs> oh my god. Chips cooked in oil. Not in, obviously you can get them in a chip shop, yeah, but when you're cooking them at home. I've been cooking in a bloody active fry and things like that. My mother used to cook me chips, I guess, but obviously we were talking about it earlier. Cooking them in lard, proper. I miss mum's chips. But this is like, this is a step up, boys. Mm. Oh my god! <laughs> I should have a can of bow now. Struck cloudy apple bow. Mm. Anyway, leave me alone. I want to have my food. Okay, time to get the gloves on. Let's have the unveiling. Just to see if this is cooked. It smells alright. I'm trying not to uh, burn myself too badly. Just gotta get these bloody clips out of the way. And that one out of the way. That's the hot one. How does that look, folks? Take that card out, Russ. Oh, it's a bit hard on the bottom. Oh, it's hot on the bottom as well. Right. Let it cool, man. I was just going to take it out and yeah. drop it on the lid. Hopefully, get the lid in the shot. Right. That needs to cool now, because that's going to be sliced tomorrow. With my bacon and everything for breakfast. <coughs> Hopefully. I can just pan you up a bit. I'll just lift you up. Let's 
It sounds all right. You'll see tomorrow. I didn't realise that you were filming when you put your finger. No, I didn't. I wasn't filming then, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah, I just like went to like tap the top of the bread and ended up pushing my finger straight into it. But I don't want to open it up now. It's nice and fluffy and dry inside anyway. So that bread's cooked really well. So if you look at my method, it's not my method. I um, saw a video with the, the chap that owns and uh, runs Firebox. Like my Bushcraft uh, Essentials, Bushbox XL. Um, yeah, I think he obviously makes them. And then this is his method of baking. I've watched some of his videos. They're really good. But anyway, that's the mesh I bought from China. Stainless mesh. That goes on the bottom. My cake tin that I had to like shape down so it was small enough to slide inside. And then obviously then I made the clips to lock it closed. And then that's my oven and I just cook with embers. It's worked. Excellent. Well, morning folks, I didn't uh, film the lighting of the fire this morning, we've only been up about 20 minutes, half an hour, we're drinking out Russ's rocket fuel, it's a proper way to get anybody up, I think, uh, you know, the little way to walk in dead up as well, but uh, we had no choice, we had an early morning wake up call from the road deer barking and it was really, really loud and they weren't far away as well, so Basically, it was like, come on, time to get up. Cold night. Slept okay. You were plenty warm in your hammock, is it? I think could have been. Um... But uh, I was warm enough. I think it was just um, the heat was coming out, sort of billowing out at the top of the sleeping bag. So I had to wrap up tight. But I reckon it, it definitely dropped down to... Uh, I was hovering above freezing, I'd say. Mm. But anyway... Time for a cup of coffee. We're not rushing out here yet.
red has come out lovely. Don't fault that now. It's not so wee. Yes, it's a bit cold because it's dropped down to nearly freezing, but you could always toast it. Well, this pan is seasoned anyway. I still have a good scrubbing when I get home. breakfast is cooked bacon bread I baked last night and then Russ has got more coffee on the go in the, the, the Petromax percolator anyway there's not going to be a lot more footage today I just wanted to get up and I want to have a decent breakfast in us and then we'll start packing up because we obviously got to get home well folks, thanks for watching, um, not a massive amount of footage, I hope you enjoyed the cooking and a bit of a kit review with the Trangia um, stainless mess kit from the Swedish Army and obviously my axe um, versus sort of shoot up between the Grandsfors Brooks Wildlife and the Outdoor Axe. I probably will have split those into two separate videos but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the footage, not a massive amount this time like I said. Just Russ and myself camping out this weekend. It's just nice to get out of the house and everything, what with all that's going on in the world. It's just nice to get out and have a bit of peace and quiet in nature. It's been lovely. We've been, we were woken up with a road here this morning, uh, barking really loudly. So uh, there's plenty of sign here. So for all the years we've been coming here, we've seen nothing. And now they're actually here in the forest. So what else can I say? I'm going to leave the fire burn down, clean the last of that bit away now. So the site is nice and clean for the next time we arrive. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a like. If you haven't subscribed already, um, please click on the subscribe and then tap on the, uh, the bell uh, below so you get notifications of any new content that I put out. Other than that, thank you for watching. Um, more videos coming soon. What more can I say? We're packing up, it's time to go. You can go as well. We want peace and quiet. Say thank you, Russ. Thank you, Russ. No, no, I mean not thank you, Russ, but you know, <laughs> thanks to the people at home.